Welcome to another Indie Dev Showcase, highlighting the many indie games we play here on the channel. If you'd like to submit a game for a future video, please reach out. But otherwise, let's begin. We are beginning this week with Scholar of the Arcane Arts. The footage you're seeing is taken from Early Access and may not represent the current version of the game. This is an action roguelike where we play as, well, a wizard. And when bad things are happening, it's up to us to pick up our spell book and start flinging spells at a myriad of enemies. The kind of hook of this game is the interaction between spells and elements. Different elemental properties have combinations with one another. If you place down any kind of like forest or vines and then use a fire spell on them, they will catch on fire, doing increased damage. You'll be able to get different spells of not only different elemental properties, but different kind of strength levels as well. And you'll be able to freely mix and match them on your quick bar at the bottom of the screen. Our challenge here is figuring out how to deal with the enemies given the spells that you get and making the most use out of your different elemental combinations. There is a progression or some level of persistence, at least in the version that we played, with being able to unlock more kind of spells that can show up, but I do not know if that's in the latest iteration of it. The gameplay here is solid. It did feel a little bit on the slower side from when we played it, and it does feature some basic uh, proc gen in terms of the uh, level design, level creation. You have to get yourself to the exit of each level while fighting more and more enemies who stand in your way. There is definitely potential here, and I like the kind of mix of the various powers as a way of allowing you a little bit more variety and more use of your spells. Anytime you can combine attacks is always a plus in my book. So, if you enjoy your action roguelike and looking for one that's going to make you think as much about your spells as you do slinging them, then definitely give this one a try. We now go to Cantata. This is a 4x turn-based strategy game on a far distant world. Various factions are duking out for dominance, and it's going to be up to you to take the lead in one of them in order to take over. The game features co-op and PvP play as well. Now, the twist of Cantata is that it merges elements of kind of logistics sims and a civilization style game on top of things. You see, in order to maintain and build new units, you need to construct resource producers, as well as those that can refine said resources into the equipment you need to then construct a new unit. This is not a simple case of hit button, unit gets produced on the next turn. It's more, I need to construct fuel to then get sent to my garage, so I can then construct an engine that can get sent to my kind of vehicle producer to then construct said vehicle. And this gives this game a very different feel to it. You are very much encouraged or forced to expand out. You can only construct a limited number of buildings and anything that can produce or consume resources in an individual section. Combat is your standard kind of units on tiles and pew pewing each other. You get access to a consumable resource that kind of recharges on each turn that lets you push things like a little bit further. Maybe letting a unit move further, let them attack a second time, etc, etc. And you'll need to manage that as you try and take over the map and deal with your various enemies. While this all sounds great, it unfortunately causes the same issue that we see from a lot of turn-based strategy games along these lines, and that it becomes very tedious to play. You're going to have to spend a far longer kind of building up your settlement, making sure you understand how resource production logistics go before you can even start conquering your first enemy base. And on top of that, the enemy fights can be a little bit on the slower side as well as you're trying to not only deal with the enemies, but keep your units logistically fed with resources, fuel, ammo, and all that stuff. And 
it unfortunately then makes this game a lot of a harder sell. If you're looking for a turn-based strategy game that is very kind of snappy and fast to play, Cantata is unfortunately not it. If you are a 4x turn-based strategy fan, you're looking for one that plays very differently and kind of really emphasizes the entire idea of building your bases out and making each unit really matter because of it, I would give it a check. But I do hope that we see like someone expand this idea of combining like the logistics resource movement, but just making it a little bit, I think, smoother and snappier to play. Speaking of smoother and snappier, let's get some shooting with Stared in Binary Stars. Now this is a game that I played kind of from my own collection from the Indie Night. This is one of the kind of early takes on the uh, roguelike bullet hell or roguelike shmup. It's you, a ship, and randomly slash procedurally generated areas that you must explore, shoot, and do your best job at dodging the myriad of bullets. Get to the end of an area, beat the boss, and you will choose from one of several randomly chosen upgrades that can change a property of your ship in some way, shape, or form. Now this is a score-based game, so you're not kind of playing this to get to an end, but see how far you can go. Now the game has received updates from its original release, which I can't tell you how it's different because we only played this one about a year or so ago at the time of this recording. But this one definitely hits all those checkpoints. If you're looking for a shmup, but with a little bit more replayability to it, you're going to enjoy this one. If you're looking for a roguelike that is definitely more on the action-oriented side, you're also going to enjoy this. If I had any nitpicks or complaints, is that if you're looking for kind of like a deeper roguelike or roguelite experience, this game, again, just focuses entirely on the score chasing. And as I've said in previous videos, I'm not a huge score chase fan myself, but I always enjoy a good shmup. And this one is kind of one of the early takes at combining these elements in an interesting way, and it's certainly not the last in that regard. We now turn to Igni Stone. And this is quite an unusual one. This is an action roguelite that is entirely built on kind of a, a parry system. How this works is that during combat you'll need to properly time your parries to knock enemies or stun them, which will then allow you to proceed to, well, beat them up with whatever weapon you have. As you get further down to this massive dungeon, you'll be able to acquire resources you can take back to unlock new items and resources and features that will help you on later floors, including making your weapon stronger, giving yourself more health, etc, etc. If your ultimate goal is to knock some sense into the people who have been corrupted by these strange masks that are making them do bad things. Now, the main thing about this one is that it can be on the challenging side. You can only kind of bank your resources after certain floors. And if you don't do that, then you're not going to be able to make any permanent progress. As the game goes on, the difficulty gets higher when it comes to properly managing the timing for parrying. Enemies become a little bit more erratic, and they become faster as well. So this one is a very interesting kind of action roguelike. If you're not a fan of kind of a parry based system, then definitely stay far away from it. But it's a very charming game, and there's certainly a lot here if you can get used to the parry system and kind of make your way down this very dark and deep dungeon. We have another action roguelike on deck now with Sifu. This game was in early access for quite some time and was released as of end of 2023. This is a game that combines the kind of like cell mini game of Spore, but turns it into a full on action roguelike. Your job is to try and survive in the ocean, absorbing and growing your kind of organism ever bigger, more weapony, and of course, get more powers along the way. As you kill enemies, you'll be able to absorb their kind of various notes, and you can then use those resources to then reproduce them onto your character. 
similar to that of something like uh, Space Pirates and Zombies too, that every kind of section on your character and where you place those nodes will affect them. If you want your character to turn faster to the left, place more movement-based nodes on the left side, but then it becomes a lot harder to then turn to the right. Wherever you place your attacking uh, the nodes will affect their trajectory and where you'll be able to hit with them. So there's quite a lot going on into this one, and it does make it a little bit on the challenging side to learn. Poison and kind of damage over time effects can really wreck you at the start, as it can start destroying your kind of body parts, and then if you don't have enough resources to bring them back, you're going to be kind of in deep trouble, especially if you lose all your means of attacking. As you play through, you'll be able to unlock kind of more starting nodes, which will then give you more variety at the beginning. This one is on the niche side. If you're looking for a more straightforward action roguelike, Sifu is definitely not going to do it for you. But if you're a fan of kind of a create your build as you go kind of game and looking for a very original take, then you should at least give this one a check and see if you can build something wacky or dangerous with it. For the last game of today's showcase, this is the demo for The Last Exterminator, a modern retro boomer shooter in kind of a similar vibe and style of Duke Nukem. Instead of pigs and aliens invading the earth, it is giant bugs. And as an exterminator who was there at the scene, it is up to us to shoot our way across a city, figure out why they are invading, and make as many witty one-liners along the way as possible. Our gameplay here again should be very familiar to anyone who's played any kind of boomer shooter in the last 20 to 30 years. Now, unfortunately, the engine that they're using didn't quite, I guess, agree with OBS, which is why you're seeing it kind of cut up like this, but I'm sure that will be improved when the game is fully out. So, in terms of our play here, again, this is going to be classic boomer shooter style. Expect to pick up lots of guns, shoot many enemies, and see how many interactables and secrets you can find along the way. I like the kind of effect or the style of the bugs and the different enemies you're going to fight. The footage you are seeing is played on the highest difficulty, so you're probably going to see me take a little bit more damage than what you may get if you play it on your own. The demo was only two levels long, so that meant we didn't get a chance to see how things will escalate or kind of stand out from other boomer shooters. Still, this one has a lot of potential to go with it, and the demo should still be up as you're watching this now. So if you are not completely tired of boomer shooters yet, and enjoy a good old bug hunt, then you definitely want to give this one a try. And with that, we are done with this week's showcase. You'll find links to all the games down below. If let me tell you your game for a future stream and showcase, please reach out. With that said, let me know what you think. And see everyone in the next video. Thanks for watching and a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy the video, do the YouTubing stuff. Be sure to visit our Discord and Patreon. And if you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my game design books.